Hey and welcome to yet another speed painting video. Um, one bread ship, and today I will be sharing with you the process video for this uh, watercolor portrait called um, Growth. I hope you enjoy. So the first part is me just trying to lock in a background as usual because I like to start with that so that I can get a better feeling of the values that I'm going to be using throughout the piece. Um, also before I forget, this is the sixth, I believe, piece in my series of 10 paintings that I will be doing. And I forgot to record the last one. I usually do a female portrait and then a male portrait and I just do that. But I forgot to, like I didn't think I would need to record every single painting. But then I was like, well if I'm not going to share all of the pieces then what's the point of making it a series, right? So, so I just realized that with this one. So. The next one you will be seeing will be probably about, um, like, we'll have a girl as a main character. I just like to mix them up because I feel like I'm more comfortable drawing uh, women. But then if I don't draw men often, I feel like I just don't get enough practice. So it's just easier for me to, uh, to paint one male and then one female so that I can get better at drawing both and not just one. So, yeah, uh, right now what you see me doing is, I decided not to go with a, with a, um, a skin color, like a base skin color, a wash or something, I just decided to do it as I initially started painting my portraits, which is just shading the darkest parts of the face, like for example here, the nose and the eyes and also the lips. I find this to give a better look in the end because it looks just cleaner and and like more more contrasting uh, than if I had just painted over um, a skin tone. Maybe if I did a very very light wash, but I usually have issues um, painting too light because I like to see results fast. I'm really impatient when it comes to painting. I know with watercolor it's a little bit difficult to, uh, like to get the result right from the start. Uh, usually what you want to do is get soft edges and hard edges and for the soft edges you will need to uh, have very light washes because you need a lot of water to soften the, those edges and then start building up until you get to the point where you can have uh, the, the hard edges but for me it's just <laughs> That doesn't work really well because uh, as I said I I'm really impatient and I like to see results fast so I'll, my paintings usually don't have uh, a lot of soft edges I do try to get them here and there but, but it's just not not something that I consistently do maybe that's the thing that I could improve on but it's just hard for me to to start painting very light and then build up Gradually, I like to just place the color as I imagine it, which is not, again, not the greatest thing to do with watercolor because usually you wanna, like, if you go too dark, then you can go back and make it light again. So it's kind of, it's kind of uh, a thing to keep in mind if you wanna try watercolors is that uh, you always have to build uh, from light to dark and because otherwise you can just come back with. The same watercolors and lighten up uh, a part of the portrait or the painting in general. What you would do usually is just use wash or another paint that it's more opaque and try to lighten everything up but in order to do that and for it to not look uh, messy you would need to have very like a very covered area of paint. Uh, for example I don't know the nose is very <laughs> like very painted uh, compared to the rest of the face and so you can really see the paper but with watercolors you would usually want to let the paper uh, show through because that's just part of the like of the look of the medium and, and if you 
want to add a white wash or white paint to lighten something up, then you would usually want to have uh, the part that you want to lighten covered in a lot of paint so that the wash doesn't look weird or doesn't look like you just added some some random blob of paint in there. And yeah, uh, in this piece I also uh, came back to the thing that I was doing in which I told you about in the other video that I usually just do the nose and the lips and the areas with a lot of blood flow more reddish and then the areas that are like further from the center of the face I do in blue I just feel like it gives it uh, more dimension and it just looks better to me that way uh, I'm letting the piece like dry for some pieces or some parts of the painting uh, I didn't want to have very soft edges so I needed the I needed it to to dry completely or also to when you want to darken uh, a piece of the painting what you will usually want to do is just um, let everything dry and then go in with dark color so that you don't lose the shapes that you created it's kind of like um, a multiply a blending mode if you ever used a photoshop or or some photo editing software like that then you would know what i mean <laughs> by overlay or multiply it's kind of the same with watercolors you can have very defined shapes and then let them dry completely and go over with a darker shade so that you can further increase the contrast without losing like the shapes that you already rendered and that's something that i found pretty neat about watercolor and then i moved on to or increasing the contrast on his face i also realized that the areas were like the transition area between the jaw and the nose, lips and eyes and the forehead uh, was a little bit too white so I went in with just a very light wash of, of red paint so that it didn't look as unfinished because that's something also to consider when using watercolor sometimes when a piece looks bad it's just because you're going through the ugly stage I like to call it <laughs> and that means that uh, there is like you're in the point in which if you stop then the piece is going to look awful <laughs> and then if you keep further working on it it will improve so i was in that stage when i added the like the base color and now i'm just further refining the shapes and everything and the shadows and making them look uh, darker with colored pencils i use the same ones as the ones that i used in my previous video uh, which is just uh, ultramarine i believe for just navy blue or something like that and then just a random red that I just picked up in there and yeah I just decided to shade it all and I didn't go in with a white pencil because I didn't want it to look the blue to look very light like you can see on the bottom of his hand I did went in there with the white pencil um, because I wanted it to be a bit lighter than how it had turned out and now for the fun part, I was actually planning on doing something different with his right eye, but just in case that it didn't work or that I didn't feel like doing it, I had to paint the whole eye regardless of whether I was going to do this like extra element or not. I wanted to have it render just for the sake of it and also just to give it a better like put together kind of look. <laughs> Like, you know, sometimes when you don't work in, on a part of the painting and then you add something else, it looks weird because it you didn't do it at the same time that the rest of the painting. And I didn't want that to happen, so I just uh, painted that eye as well. And now I'm covering it with... I'm using wash in here. Um, I just have a, a set of five tubes or so, I believe. And I just have the primary colors, like red, and blue, and green, and yellow, and then black and white, so yeah, there are five. And I mixed uh, white with red to get this pinkish tone. And then I also added some blue to it so that I could mute it a little bit and not have it very bright because it, I didn't want the flower to stand out too much. And I also added uh, white paint over the edges because the reference photo had very light um, it was like a transition, a gradient from yellow, well, from very light yellow, almost white, to a very deep uh, red. I wasn't getting those shades with the with the wash, so what I decided to do was to wait for it to dry and then come back in with 
colored pencils. Um, I also added uh, like a stem with golden ink, but I should have just waited until I had shaded everything because I then came back in with the colored pencils, but it was a bit hard to shade the part in which the gold ink had been placed because uh, the colors were smearing it all over the place and even though it was already dry, the paint kept moving, which was a bit annoying. I decided to bring in a bit more color to the flower because it was a bit too transparent for my taste. I went in with red and pink and also this brown reddish color uh, for the darkest part of the painting. And I also added a light yellow to make it look more like the reference that I was using. And also, this is a part in which I go back to the hair and, and add um, some white hair strands. I also decided to add back into the piece a like shading to the flower. I almost uh, forgot about it, but it made a whole difference in the painting because it makes it look more uh, like it has more depth to it. And when I was adding my signature, I always forget which part of the of the fountain pen to use to get very light and delicate lines. So yeah, but I hope you enjoy this uh, watercolor portrait. Uh, and uh, you can follow me on Instagram or all of my other social media in case you want to see more of my work. And I hope you enjoy.